So, what is wrong with Northern protesters waving Russian flag during the protest? What is wrong with it? They call it end bad governance protest. And then they are waving Northern flags. And we hear that the Nigerian army is saying it is treason, or some people are saying it's treason. Treason according to which law? You all know fundamentally that where there is no law, there is no sin. When there is no law, there is no offense. When there is no law, there is no crime. According to which law? Is it a crime? Or is there something wrong with these protesters waving Russian flag in their protest? According to which law? Which law prohibits any Nigerian from waving the flag of any other country? Are you saying that, oh, if it had been an American flag, it would have been wrong? It should have been, if it had been a French flag, it would have been wrong? Or Israeli flag, it should have been wrong? Or even South African flag, it would have been wrong? Is that what we're saying? What is wrong with them waving the Russian flag? I really like to know. If there's a law against it, educate us, point us to the law. We would like to know. But to just come out and just give a dog a bad name so that you can hang it, it won't fly. The, the hunger in the land, the suffering in the land is far too much for people to ignore. Now, I know that it is not possible for the people I see in those protests in the north, the people waving these Russian flags, I don't think it is possible for them to actually be aware of the implications of their action. I'm not sure they do. I'm not sure they are. But definitely, it is definitely obvious that some people in the north understand something. And what is that thing that they understand? They understand the cause of their problems. Insecurity has ravaged the north for quite some time now. Their farmers can't go to farm. Definitely. Their cattle are being rustled even when they do their nomadic herding. Their minerals, their, their uranium, their gold, their cobalt, their lithium, their californium. They are being looted from their grounds and they are not getting the benefit of those, those, those minerals. And you don't, you don't think they know where the problem is coming from? Their farmers can't farm. Food self-sufficiency is being destroyed. Food security is being destroyed. And you think they don't know where that is coming from? And they don't know who is potentially a solution to them? You think they don't know? If you think so, then you're just playing the ostrich. You're burying your head in the sand, not knowing your nyash is out in the open. Why is it that they, they cannot go to farm in peace? Why is it that farmers have to pay bandits taxes? Government is taxing on one side. Bandits are taxing on one side. Terrorists are taxing on one side. Kidnappers are taxing on one side. The North is under siege today. And you think they don't know where their problems come from? In 2014, 2014, 2015, just before the 2015 election, at the height of Boko Haram activities in this country, they, they took over over 27 local government areas in Borno. In the height of it, Jonathan cried to Obama and the U.S. Congress for weapons, weapons to fight Boko Haram. What happened? Obama refused. The U.S. Congress refused. The U.K. refused. EU, European Union, Germany, they refused. Why? They were citing a report of human, uh, a human rights violation by Amnesty International in Bornu against Boko Haram. They cited that, oh, no, they cannot give their weapons to an army to go and use to commit human rights violations. They cannot. That was what they told Jonathan then in 2014-2015. And they refused to give him weapons. They refused. Yet, they are arming Israel now. That's to show you their double standards. But let's move on. Out of frustration, oh, Jonathan almost cried. In fact, not almost cried. When you heard him talk then, you will know that the man was crying within. Ah, the West showed him Pepe. A legitimate government that cannot get weapons from the West 
who claim they are your allies to fight insecurity, to fight terrorists in your country, he could not understand it. He, um, he, he was not crying, he was even dying within. Many people don't understand why he said, I will not let the blood of any Nigerian go for my ambition. He just gently just stepped aside because he saw the handwriting on the wall. Out of frustration, he decided to go to black market in order to restore peace in the north so that their farmers can farm. So they can get the benefit of their of their mineral resources. He decided, Jonathan decided to do black market weapons purchase. And that was when we heard about, oh, uh, some people at uh, ZNIA had arrangement with a pastor with private jet. They put dollar in, they got to South Africa. And the same West used their Interpol connection, international police, Interpol, to ground the plane in South Africa. Frustrating the efforts of Nigeria as a legitimate sovereign country to get weapons to defeat insecurity. Where? In the north. Out of frustration. When Jonathan saw that, ah, this boy, they won't finish me. He decided to employ the services of a private military contractor from South Africa. Executive outcome. Executive outcome. Executive outcome. You know, South Africa is in close proximity with Russia. So, where do you think executive outcome got their weapons from? Russia. So, in a way, it was Russia that helped. Because executive outcome, when they took the job, they came and they did a fantastic job. In fact, if you remember, some of you might have forgotten. Elections could not hold in Borno because of the activities of Boko Haram. 27 local governments flying their flags. They had to shift it for like six weeks and allow time for executive outcome to do their job. And they did a good job. I think by the time, by the end of that six weeks, they had pushed Boko Haram out of the over 27 local governments and they were just remaining in four or five local governments. There was relative peace. INEC was able to conduct their elections and somehow the West got what they wanted. Buhari won. And the executive outcome continued to do their job. They continued to decimate Boko Haram until May 29th when Buhari was sworn in. Immediately after that, what happened? The contract of executive outcome was terminated by Buhari. And who was responsible? According to the CEO of executive outcome, in an interview he granted Al, Al, Al Jazeera, the interview is there on YouTube. Just Google it. Executive Outcome CEO interview with Al Jazeera on Boko Haram. Google it or YouTube it. The video will come out. This is not conspiracy theory. Hard facts. The Executive Outcome CEO said it himself that the Americans forced Buhari to terminate the contract of Executive Outcome so they can allow the Americans. And if you remember, many of you have forgotten the Americans sent some soldiers, U.S. Marines or co, in the name of we're going, coming to give you tactical and logistic support. And that was when Lai Mohammed came out to say Boko Haram has been technically defeated. Immediately after those U.S. soldiers left, it took about a week or two. What did we see? The resurgence of Boko Haram in a more ferocious form. You see, we are oblivious of something. Even the Nigerian army has come out to say that the weapons that these terrorists use are more sophisticated than even their own. And we don't ask a question. Does Boko Haram or bandits, do they manufacture weapons? If legitimate countries like Nigeria in the time of Jonathan could not get weapons from the West, where did the bandits get the weapons from? In line with the, the goal and the objective of the IMF and the World Bank, in line with it, to make sure that you are not food self-sufficient, you are not food secure, they are using some people from amongst us, like they always do, masters of the game of divide and conquer, to perpetrate terrorism so that our farmers will not farm. And once we don't farm, what happens? We cannot be food self-sufficient uh, or food secure. We'll have to import food from who? From them. 
from them. So when the terrorists are more weaponized, they have more sophisticated weapons, more equipped than our legitimate military. You ask yourself, where are the weapons coming from? And you think the people from the north, they don't know? Majority of them may not know because large majority of the population in the north is uneducated. But those educated few, you think they don't know? They know. And obviously they are the ones that have fed this protesting crowd this information. So what is wrong with them asking for a savior? And by the way, can the people ask Russia to come? Because some of you are saying misinformed people are saying, oh, they are calling on Russia. They are calling on... The people do not have the power to invite Russia to come. They don't. Because you are citing what happened in Niger, what happened in Senegal, what happened in Mali, what happened in Burkina Faso. The people can, they can only say what they want to say. The only people who have the power to invite Russia to come is the government. Only Tinubu and his um, administration can invite Russia to come. So the people can only understand what is going on and vent their anger. What is wrong with that? You say they flew flag. You are arresting innocent Taylor. That saw an opportunity. That don't, don't even know the meaning of the flag. He was given a contract, he sold flag, and you are arresting him? You know, it's becoming very, very clear that somehow this Tinubu administration, as with other administrations, are aware or they are the main sponsor of these terrorists. Because the way they rolled out the military architecture of Nigeria, the army, the air force, the navy, the civil defense, the police, the DSS, the way they rolled them out with tanks and, and, and guns and, and, and tear gas, the way they rolled them out against innocent protesters, if they take half of that force and use it to attack the terrorists, there will be no terrorists in Nigeria. But they don't do it. But when it comes to innocent civilians, their power will come out. So tell me, why won't they request? Why won't they protest? And what is wrong with them flying Russian flag? What has the West ever done for Nigeria if not to ensure that we continue to remain poor? Everything that we got, when we go back in time, and say, oh, the good old days. Oh, there was a time where we had so much money, like uh, Yakubu Gowon said, the problem is how to spend it. Why, did we, why were we so rich? Because we were producing our own things. We had the Anamcos, the Leland, we have truck manufacturing companies, car manufacturing companies in Nigeria, textile manufacturing companies in Nigeria, cable manufacturing companies in Nigeria, Michelin, Dunlop, tire manufacturing companies in Nigeria, um, rubber manufacturing companies in Nigeria, coal, everything we had, our refineries were working. Everything was working, so there, was, there were jobs. But what happened? The West came and made sure they destroyed everything through structural adjustment program. Destroyed everything. They call it globalization. Unknown to those leaders, they don't know that the playbook of the IMF and World Bank is privatization and globalization. They use and weaponize their private corporation against countries that were not so savvy. So the likes of Shell and Ajib and all this, they are more powerful than even Nigeria right now in Nigeria. And that was what they did. They destroyed our production capacity. All the car manufacturing dead. All the, the uh, truck manufacturing companies dead. All the steel manufacturing companies dead. All the steel, everything dead. No manufacturing capacity anymore. They advise you to now import 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 and they start talking about comparative advantage oh your agricultural product your role is raw material production come on and you think the north is not aware they are aware and in fact it's information for you everything that we have russia did for us the ussr they wanted an ally in us and so they were helping us they helped us to build a jakuta they helped us to build a, a just steel steel rolling mill all of those things built for us by russia and all of those things destroyed for us by the West. They want us to continue to depend on them. 
And to make matters worse, they are sponsoring insecurity in the north. So the north cannot farm. Their mineral resources, they come and steal them. The north cannot get benefit to it. And you say they should not fly Russian flag. And you are calling it treason. Please let us know how it is treason. Nigeria, it's time for us to shine our eyes. Oh. We need to break free from this modern day slavery that we are in. We need to break free. This end governance protest, it is a symbol. The Tinubu administration may not pay attention, but they are paying attention because they are giving him sleepless nights. They may not attend to the demand, but you know, they have taken note. And it is now left for us as a people to go beyond the protests and begin to organize, to make sure that only leaders that have the interests of Nigeria at heart emerge in 2027 because goats are queuing for 2027. And unless genuine and patriotic Nigerians organize and come together, things will continue to go from bad to worse. So please leave our protesters alone. Focus on the issues. Let's make alliances that will push Nigeria forward. That's what we need. Not continuing to target innocent citizens.